In this video, we're gonna go over is koa wood, which is this one right here in the center, is it worth it? Is it worth the price? Is it a better sound compared to these other two that I have on my left and right? I don't know. We're gonna find out in this video. Well, welcome to Uke Like The Pros, I'm Terry Carter. This is gonna be a fun video. I got three ukes we're gonna be looking at today. We got A, well, let's start here. We got the Koaloha, made in Hawaii, Hawaiian made instrument. Then we also have a Koaloha laminate, one with the high G and one with the low G. We're gonna go over and see, is koa wood really worth the price? Because these, this one right here, are worth about, sell for about 250, and these sell for about 1250, so is it worth the price? But anyway, uh, thanks for being here. As I mentioned, I'm Terry Carter. If I didn't, I'm Terry Carter. <laughs> and this is Uke Like The Pros. I appreciate you being here and uh, checking out this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell notification. So I sell a lot of all these ukuleles right here. Uh, that's my store, the number one and the biggest online store at store.ukelikethepros.com. And I wanna go over today, is this koa wood, this made in Hawaii, koa wood's only grown in Hawaii, uh, is it worth the price? Because it is pricey, but is it worth the sound, the look, the feel, compared to just a Koaloha that's about 250, and we're gonna go over it. So I'm gonna do some playing samples. We're gonna go over each one of these instruments so you know exactly what we're dealing with here. And uh, I also love to hear your comments on this stuff. Uh, one, do you have a cold wood instrument? What do you think of it? What does it make of it? And uh, yeah, leave that in the comment below. All right, should we? Let's just jump right in. All right, so I gotta start with my Koaloha. If you've seen my videos, if you've seen any of my courses over at ucollectopros.com, this is, I guess you would call my number one. <laughs> this is a, the instrument that I've done tons and tons of videos on. This is all solid koa wood and handpicked for me by Koaloha and uh, absolutely a stunner, stunner instrument. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot, a lot of miles on this thing. But anyway, uh, koa wood, What's so special about coal wood? Well, I'll talk about that, but really what this is about is, is it worth it? Is it worth the price? This right here, I'm just gonna say a round number is about 250. So I sell these probably at 250, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but probably a little more. <laughs> but um, anyway, is it worth it? So what is coal wood? Well, it's, it's the wood that's only grown on the islands of Hawaii. Now this one, I chose the three instruments I chose because they're all tenor. Let's make sure we got that. They're all tenor ukuleles. They're all three koa, uh, sorry. <laughs> They're all three koa loha. That's what I meant to say. Um, and so that's why I wanted to try to keep the size and everything very similar so you can really hear the difference between these instruments. This one does have a low G on it. I was gonna have my high G koa one, but I forgot I took it to the shop. So uh, I don't have that. So we're just gonna use this one and then the two other ones, which I'll go over the high G and low G of the other koa lohas. All right, so koa would only grow in Hawaii has something to do with the volcanic ash. It's a very, very special wood. Hawaii only lets a certain amount of that wood, of that coal would even be used each year and as the demands go up. Furniture makers, ukulele makers, whatever, all kinds of stuff people want coal wood for, obviously the price is gonna continue to go up, up and up. But, but you know that when you see coal wood, it's only grown in one place and that is the islands of Hawaii. So. This is a traditional wood of Hawaiian made instruments. And you see other, other brands too are making koa wood, but you see companies like Koaloha, Kanalea, really using kamaka. Can leave the throwing kamaka till you got it. They've been around for a long, long time. I'm still waiting to get them on my store, but <laughs> that's another story. Um, anyway, um, uh, you know, it's just been around. It's a great sounding wood. The very balanced wood, it's a very warm wood. <laughs> By the way, I'm not using my pickup. All we're using, all of them are gonna be using the same mic, which is right above my head, so you get a clear sound of what they are. Sorry, these are the tenor size ukuleles. What does that mean? Well, the tenor body. Also, mainly it talks about the scale length. What is scale length? It's the scale length between the nut and the saddle. These are 17 inches, which is very traditional for a, uh, 
for Ten Rook Lake. Now, the made in Hawaii, 25 years experience, Koloha, I mean, best of the best, um, solid mahogany next. Of course, the five point crown. Um, and then this one actually has, and this is a little different. This one actually has a, uh, what is this? I think it's a rosewood fretboard. Might, yeah, rosewood. <laughs> uh, they stopped using it now. Everything is ebony, uh, rose, ebony sound now. Uh, just like kind of like the sides here, right here. So anyway, uh, yeah, let me grab the other ones. We're gonna do a plain sample. I'll play the same thing with all the pieces, all, all the uh, instruments once I get them. But let me show you the other ones. All right, so I got two of the Koloha. These are the Koholanas Trembesi, the KTAs. 00TR is the model numbers. I do have these at my store, store.youcollectopros.com. By the way, thanks for smashing that like button. Um, and the reason why I have two is I wanted to grab a high G and a low G. This one right here has a high G. This one has a low G. They're essentially the same as the instrument I just showed you, the main Hawaii one, but um, they're made out of laminate. They're laminate trembesi wood is the wood that it's called. Um, let me go over them individually here, even though they're basically the same, like I said, high G and low G, but I wanted to have both of them so you could hear the difference. All right, so we're gonna start with the high G one. So what this is, this is a tenor size as well. This is trembesi wood, so this is a laminate. They don't have like a koa laminate, so this is the best I can do. And it's, it's very similar looking to koa wood, um, but uh, tenor size, uh, made in Indonesia, um, and uh, you know, for about 250. These things are about 250, and uh, they're a great kind of a uh, starter uke that you want a little bit of a higher quality than just spending like, you know, 60 bucks on something, uh, but obviously the price range is good, and you still get the koa quality there. So you got the laminate wood. They did a nice job though with the, the binding here. Um, you know, you do have a solid wood neck. You have open gear tuners. You still have the Koloa crown here, um, but you just don't have kind of the, the high-end ebony. You don't have the high-end uh, woods and tuners and stuff like that. And that's how it helps keep the price down. But anyway, this one has the high G. All right, so this one right here, this is the same instrument that I just played. I played the high G, but this one is the low G, but I had to look on my computer. I got all the woods here. <laughs> I totally blanked on when I was showing the other one. So I'm gonna show you the wood of the neck and the fretboard that I uh, finally remember here. So anyway, uh, what keeps this about around 250 besides the laminate. Now, when you see this binding here, this is an ABS binding, which is a plastic. So instead of ebony, which ends up costing a lot more, you have the ABS, you do have the solid NATO neck here. So it is solid wood, but it's NATO. Uh, and then Merbau, Merbau wood here for the fretboard. So it's just a hard wood, but all of these things kind of help keep the price where they are. But anyway, this one is a low G. All right, but now it's time to put these to the test. What do you think when I play them back to back, the back, by the way, I'll play the same song and everything, and that's why I'm gonna put my headphones on and get a backing track so it's the same tempo and stuff. But the Koa wood, what did I say? I'm just, I said about 1250, I think they're actually a little more, <laughs> to be honest with you, but I'll just keep the numbers nice. So about $1,000 more than these two. Is it worth it? Is the sound of the Koa gonna be worth these two? I'm gonna play them all. I want you to leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking on these, and then uh, I'll give you my opinion, which I know you wanna hear, I'll give you my opinion at the end. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. All right, I'm ready. I got my headphones plugged in here. We're gonna start with the High G, Koalana, then we're gonna go to the Koa Wood, and then I'm gonna go to the Koalana High G, or sorry, Low G at the end. So those are the three we're gonna do. By the way, if you're digging this stuff, if you dig me, if you wanna learn more, check out youcollectopros.com. We got all kinds of ukulele courses over there, and also fantastic premium membership. So come be a part of the, the You Like the Pros Nation. All right. Are you ready? Come on, let's go.
right, so what did you think? Remember, we did the high G colana first, then we did the koa wood with the low G, and then we did the koalana with the low G. Those were the three. So what did you think? Put a comment below. Did you hear the difference between the three instruments? Did you like one? better than you. Don't worry. I'm going to tell you my opinion at you. All right. So I want to continue this. This back to back to back. Why don't we do one? We do a little finger picking now. So what did you think of the finger picking? Again, we did the high G first, then we did the low G koa, then the low G uh, laminate. So uh, leave a comment below, did the finger picking help? By the way, that was from my finger style mastery course, which is available at youcollectthepros.com. And by the way, that book, uh, which is out on Amazon, uh, <laughs> it's also available at store at you the pros, but on Amazon, it was the number one new release in three different categories, both the hard copy and the Kindle version. So. Thank you for that. All right, we're gonna do one more thing. You know me, I love the blues, so we gotta do a little blues -y thing here. We'll do the same thing here. High G, low G koa, low G trembresi. Let's go ahead and see what happens. So what do you think? We just did three different things. We did the strumming song, we did the finger picking, and we did the blues. Is the koa, is it worth it? Remember, we did the high G, the low G, koa, and then the low G from Bessie. I'm thinking, as I was playing, I was like, maybe I should have switched the order of that. But anyway, that's where we're going to roll with it. So um, anyway, is a koa wood, is it worth the extra money? Do you want my opinion? All right, let me give it to you. All right, so first of all, these koalanas, I think they're great instruments for the price. 250, they're not very expensive and you get a lot of value, you get a lot of quality. I think they sound great. This was the one with the high G. They, you know, I have videos on the laminate versus solid wood. And so yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of that laminate sound. It's gonna be just a little bit more on the trebly side of things. But as far as just well-built quality is concerned for 250. I think they're great instruments uh, for that price. Let me grab the low G. All right, so this is the low G one. There's nothing different between these two koalanas, except I just put a low G on this string. And, and what that does, it does help beef in the sound up a little bit. It brings in a little bit of that, that little bit of that bass that's kind of missing because of the laminate. So it does bring in a little bit extra bass when you do the low G, but again, simple fix if you want a low G on these. Again, for 250, they're great sounding ukulele. Now, the real question is, is a koa worth it? <laughs> what did you say? By the way, thanks for being here and subscribing to the channel. Um, is it worth... Absolutely. <laughs> In my opinion, it's absolutely worth the extra money. Yes, I know it's about a thousand dollars difference and that, you know, it's, it's a lot of money. I know it's a lot of money, but in the scheme of things, when you get an instrument like this made in Hawaii, 25 years experience, you do get the lifetime warranty with these made in Hawaii ones. The Trembesties do have a warranty, but they don't have the lifetime warranty. You do get the lifetime warranty. You get a company like Koloa that that's all they do. They don't make guitars. They don't make a bunch of other stuff. They do one thing and they make ukuleles and they do them well. So uh, sound wise, sound wise, is it worth it? 
it's just such a warmer. Now I do have a low G on this thing. But sound wise, it's just such a nice balanced wood. Koa is just a really beautiful, it's got, you get a little bit of that treble, a little bit of bass, but it really shines in that mid range, that really that warmth sound. So sound wise, absolutely incredible. That's why I do all my videos on, well, I've been using a mango lately, but that's why I do most of my videos on the Koa. And then just as far as quality is concerned, there is a difference. Like when you hold an instrument like this, you do feel a difference in the, the, the time the care, the craftsmanship. I mean, like I said, 25 years of experience, the materials they use, the ebony, the rosewood, the koa, all that kind of stuff. It does make a difference. And not only when you just hold it, you feel it and obviously the sound as well. So for me, for sure, the koa wood is absolutely worth it. Now the kolanas are great as far as I have. As a matter of fact, one of them, the Hygie one was mine. I take that out when I'm going to the beach or traveling or just want to throw it in the car and, and I'll have to overly worry about my koa wood one. So they are great instruments, but for me, the coal wood is worth it. Is it worth it to you? Leave a comment below. So anyway, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget, if you like any of these, store.youcollectthepros.com, you can grab all of these. I hope you like videos like this where you can really hear the difference between a lot of different ones because I know it's a lot of questions that people ask. So anyway, thanks for uh, the like in the video, subscribing to the channel, and that's going to do it for this one. Don't forget, check out youcollectthepros.com if you're ready to take your playing to the level that you know it can be. All right, that's going to do it, and we'll see you next time.